Hello, hello, my friends. Welcome back to Adobe Live. I'm here with my very good friend, Voodoo Val, or should I say Sith Lord Valpatine? Very fitting outfit. Mm -hmm. That's me. That's <laughs> I her. love that this How you has doing? become a thing with this name. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> it's a thing, yeah. I think the chat, someone put it in the chat yesterday, and I'd heard it before, and I'm like, that is definitely your name <laughs> uh, for the purpose of this week. And speaking of this week, it is Sci-Fi Week. So we are doing Star Wars inspired illustrations and designs. So, um, yeah, tune in for the rest of the shows this week because it's pretty cool. Speaking of the week, let me show you our cool little graphic that we made inspired by Star Wars, made by our very own Andrew Hawk Rattle. Super cool. So, as you can see, after us, we do have Julia Vaca with the Illustrator Challenge, and then we do have Brady from Texture Labs, who is actually doing Star Wars propaganda posters. I don't know if you checked out his stream yesterday, but it was super cool. Uh, I learned a ton. He's got crazy Photoshop techniques and his inspiration that he made the designs for and actually implemented the design was very cool. So don't go anywhere after the show. Um, cool. And speaking of housekeeping items, I do want to shout out that we are doing the artist spotlight a little later on today. So about an hour and a half in, we're going to spotlight somebody from our community. So if there's anybody that you would like spotlighted in future Adobe live shows, go ahead and hit that artist spotlight tab and recommend somebody. Um, all right, cool. Without further ado, Val, hello. Hi. How are you? Let us know what's going on for today. Uh, I'm doing great. I'm super pumped to be here for day two. Uh, we did a lot of super awesome stuff yesterday, which I'm going to recap. But um, for anybody who's new, who has either never been to Adobe Live or has never met me before, my name is Fudu Val. I am a digital painter. I specialize in like dark fantasy, horror, all the spooks um, and spooks. science fiction, stuff like that. Um, I like to do portraits. Portraits is my favorite thing, but I have been known to do a landscape landscape or two um and i also paint monsters um because monsters. you know monsters are great uh so that's me um and maybe we can dive into what we did yesterday i did a tiny good. bit of work um in between now um and then so um yesterday we painted this uh wayfinder um which i'm very excited about uh and i did add a little bit of texture onto it um between our days. So as you can see, it's got a little bit of grit. It's got a little bit of grime. And um, I went into the designs that we painted on the Wayfinder. And instead of making them just like a gray color, I made them slightly green, like a, like a slight swampy green. And then I put a stroke on it. So I'm going to kind of show off how I did that. This is just a um, a, a texture of a black chalkboard with chalk smears on it. Um, and all I did was I selected the, um, I guess the cage, the, the border um, of our like metal here for the Wayfinder. And I clipped that to it. Um, or actually I masked the shape um, of it. And then I threw it on a blending mode. It's on the difference blending mode, um, tweaked some of the levels a little bit just to um, add that in there. So if I unhide it, you can see yesterday we had this um, and then now with all of the grit and Ooh. stuff, it just makes it a little more, you know, I wouldn't say like realistic, but it adds like a little more texture to like the semi-realism that I like to go for. So we're gonna be creating a, um, sales post for this. So if you were to buy a Wayfinder on Instagram, as one does, um, we're going to make obviously. the post. Yeah, obviously that's where you'd get one. Um, we're going to make the post that shows off um, its features and its price and um, maybe some testimonials um, from Kylo Ren, <laughs> uh, because I think that would be funny. Yeah, it would um, be very fun. <laughs> 
We also did a Viper Probe Droid, um, which I have added a little bit more um, detail to. So we did, we had our little sketch yesterday and I blocked it out with big shapes and came through and um, sort of uh, detailed it. Like you can see, I really pulled it into a 3D space with just some subtle shading um, with my noise texture brush. And it's not, you know, 100% movie accurate. Um, I don't really mind that. Um, said no Star Wars fan ever. <laughs> Are you telling but me that's not canon? It's not canon. Spell. But I just felt like I didn't want to spend so much time like perfecting every little detail when it's, you know, this is something we're doing for fun. Um, so I am actually going to kind of demo how I painted in the eyes and all of that good stuff. For those of you who might have been following along or trying to learn about the techniques that I was using yesterday. I'm going to show that off um, real quick. Um, and then after I do that, we are going to, the plan for this one is that we will make a poster that is like a diagram of the Viper Pro Droid and all of its features. We are going to be adding funny little items and stickers and things, which we will still do. I, I wanted to make sure I added those final details on stream where you folks can um, uh, repeat your suggestions and stuff. Uh, and then we're going to do a postcard for Tatooine, which I have spelled wrong. Please do not fire me uh -huh. from Star Wars. <laughs> um, but we're going to do like a little, a quick little landscape painting and make a um, a classic postcard piece for that. So um, real quick, let's go ahead and dissect the changes that I made to this Viper probe droid. So um I did well, go before over Before you yesterday. do that, Val, mm -hmm. um, I do want to give some love for the chat. I didn't shout you all. How dare you, Paco? <laughs> but I see that we do have uh, Froja, George, Oliver, Robert, Stoney, Odari, RB. We got all the friends. So thank you so much for everybody joining us. Please, letting, uh, please let us know where you're tuning in from. And do remember that we are on be.net slash Adobe Live. So if you're watching us on YouTube, any of the channels that we're casting to, that's awesome. But if you do want to take part in the chat and interact with us, head on over to that website, be.net slash Adobe Live, and go ahead and chat there. And as always, this is a safe space. So this is a learning community. If you have any questions on any of the workflow that Val is doing, please shout it out in the chat. I'm always looking at it, so I will try and relay those questions as best I can. Ooh. So, right on. Cool. All righty. Without yeah, further ado, let's, yeah. All right. So what were, what was the plan that we're going to do with this Viper Droid or what were you shouting out? So I am going to go over how I illustrated the eyes. I did go over a lot yesterday on like how I was painting um, the, I've got lightsabers in the way. Don't you just hate it when your lightsabers are blocking your hotkeys? Don't you hate that? It happens to me all the time. I feel like you need to show those lightsabers real quick. I do need to show the lightsabers. You're right. So it's, I'm going to show I mean, this off is, some of the lightsabers. It's, it's like May that. the fifth, which somebody actually said it's Revenge of the Fifth. Yes, and I I think right. it might. It's either Revenge of the Fifth or Revenge of the Sixth. The I think the ah, commonly okay. accepted one is Revenge of the Sixth, but I prefer the Fifth because it's back that. to back. What are you supposed to do in between right. there? You know. Yeah. Um. So this is I have a dark saber. So this is my dark saber. dark saber. Ooh, check that out. So this That's is my, cool. yeah, this is my dark saber. Um, I actually have a cosplay in the work um, to cosplay Grand Moff Gideon. So, well, That's Moff Gideon. Cool. Because I just thought it was cool. It's the Poyo guy from uh, Breaking um, Bad. And Breaking I always Bad, thought he was yeah, cool. Great actor. So I was like, oh, I could just slick my hair back into a bun, get that cape, get me that that breastplate armor and carry my dark, my dark saber around. And that would be cool. So this is my dark saber. Uh, I got that. And I also have, I've got two, I was just telling Paco, they're a little beat up because my brother and I fight with these lightsabers all the time. Uh, like we, that's awesome. we, we do battle with these, but I have, um, my Anakin slash Vader lightsaber, which is pretty cool. The lights it's aren't as saber. impressive as I would like them to be. Um, there it is. Look at that. It's very fitting for your background. Check it is. Out. It, it almost is looks violet pink. <laughs> It does. Yeah. I think the, the lighting in here kind of makes it look a little pink. But um, so I have my uh, Vader saber. And then obviously, I'm sure no one is surprised that I also have a Kylo blade. And what? this one is probably... Val with Kylo Ren props? I, I never know. would have guessed. 
Um, this is probably um, the one that's beat up the most because I I use this thing. I'm not. You can't have a lightsaber and not like swing it yeah, around. Not so. dust props. You gotta swing yeah. them around. It's 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 been. I would like to have a collection of just the hilts to hang on the wall. But if you That'd give cool. me a lightsaber with a blade in it, I'm gonna swing it at something. So um, I do have this guy, which is that's pretty um, cool. I like how time. it fires up one and then the side blades. Yeah, they just shoot yeah. out. They're like, we here, we out here. Um, we out here. So that's uh, that's my very Kylo cool. Ren, but yes, um, awesome. Yeah. So well, thank you all for looking at those lightsabers. It's very fitting. Like I said, it is Sci-Fi Week. We are doing Star Wars themed stuff, so. You can't do this stuff without some lightsabers. Can't. You really can't. You can't. Um, okay. So, yeah. If you didn't know I was a nerd, now you know. Um, <laughs> so, I'm going to go inside. over uh, how I did the um, probe droid eyes. Uh, it is kind of a combination. I think I'll just do a demo eye over here. Uh, I'm going to hold alt and select this dark color over here and just drag out a circle for myself. Um, and then I will make a clipping mask, just control shift in or command shift in. If you are using a Mac, make myself a new layer. And then I will uh, make that a clipping mask to my ellipse. Um, and I will select, I have a soft round pressure opacity brush. This is just a default brush that is in um, Photoshop. So you will all have this if you have Photoshop. Uh, and then I make sure to turn its uh, mode to dissolve because it makes me a nice um, kind of noise brush, which is fun. Um, and so what I did was I snagged um, this like light red color and kind of painted it in. I think I'll maybe make that a little bit lighter. Um, and so yesterday we did kind of a demo where I was showing how would you um, bring a circle into 3D space. And so we did a lot of this, uh, like kind of making a an ellipse into a sphere. And I was showing how, you know, you could take all of uh, these different values and shades and you could paint a circle uh, like this and kind of make it look like it was uh, a 3D object which is fun you know so we have a we have like an orb there but for these eyes i wanted to make them look uh like they're not opaque i wanted to make them a little bit translucent so how would you do that it's a little bit different it's not just kind of stacking the values and shades from dark to light uh, towards the light source to make it look 3d it's a little more in depth than that so i'm gonna come uh, back to just our dark uh, red color here. Uh, maybe select a slightly brighter color. So I added this bright color in here, uh, like so. And then I wanted to get that translucent kind of vibe going. So I grabbed a dark color and made my brush a little larger. Uh, and then I added this dark center because when you look at uh, images of like gemstones and things that are dark in color but still translucent it has like this dark center um so i did that um i'm gonna snag maybe this color here and kind of add a little bit more around the edges uh so that dark really peeks out uh, and then i grabbed my brightest color and i added um that's a little too large i added um this spot of light here that leaves like this little crescent shape of darkness underneath um, just to show that light's hitting it, but you can still see through a little bit. And then with a smaller brush right. and the same uh, lighter color, I kind of added like this little crescent shape of, um, of light here. So it's like there's light in there almost, you know? Uh, and then I just come in with my white and like a sharper brush and I can add a spot of light. I kind of did like a little dual spot of light. And then I also wanted to add a spot of light down here. Uh, and you can kind of add the light dots however you want, but I think it made it look less like an orb that is that you can't see through and more like something translucent, a little magical, maybe something that's like crystalline in nature rather than um, a solid uh, object, if that makes sense. So yeah, and that's awesome. I mean, you did that within like five or six different brush techniques. And look at that. We got a translucent 3D red eye. 
Yeah. So, very cool. Um, so uh, that's we got a we question from the chat. Oh, go for it. Let's hear it. Yeah. Best, Becca is asking, how can we share our May the 4th art with Val? You can share it um, in a lot of different places. I would love for you to post it and tag me on Twitter because that is um, where I, that it's easier for me to see things that people send me on Twitter because I use Twitter a lot. I scroll through my notifications. That's kind of the best place for it. Um, you could also post it in the game show section of the discord or tag me in it on Instagram, but Twitter's the best place. So if you will um, do that, I will see it. Speaking of Twitter, if I, if I can, um, I would like to highlight a member of our community real quick and this is kind of All right. on a yeah, whim let's do it. but um odari is in the chat i believe and i would just like to so, yeah. shout out odari and tell you that i think you're wonderful and lovely and everybody just Aww. look at this odari painted the artillerians and there's Grand Admiral Val in here, and it's featuring a lot of people from the community and did like this whole uh, piece. That's very cool. Like a poster of um, including me and some other people as Star Wars characters. And I saw this yesterday um, and I just thought this was so cool. I felt it was very fitting um, for the... Uh, for the stream and for the week this week. So um, give Odari a follow, check out Odari's art. Thank you so much for including me in this wonderful Star Wars piece. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, speaking of Twitter, give Odari a follow. If you wanna share some May the 4th art with me, um, post it on Twitter and tag me. Yeah, thank you uh, so much for showcasing that. That's no very problem. cool. I had no idea they did that. And thank you Odari if you're in the chat. Yeah, I, th I think I saw Odari, so hopefully... I saw I saw them earlier. I haven't yeah. seen them, but if you're there, let us know, because uh, yeah. that's a very cool artwork, so... You, you rock. You, you rock. rock. <laughs> Ooh, I'm losing, I'm losing lightsabers. I'm losing them. Uh -oh. <laughs> They're falling. It's okay. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and close that, and we are going to um, scrub up on our uh, skills here with landscapes. I'm going to finally correct um this <laughs> the fact that i have spelled tattooing wrong um i hope that i haven't lost any friends over this but i just typed it out real quick you know i just needed to quickly look and see if it was going to work um and i wasn't really thinking about uh the spelling um, real so quick gonna... if you if it's not going to take too long Val, can you show us how you made that curved text real absolutely because i'm i mean yeah. i'm not going to use this i'm probably i'm going to create my own so i can show you mm -hmm. real quick and then we'll dive into it um later yep. so what i did was i just with my type tool um i just came in here let me make sure i'm on top of everything i'll hide my notes and stuff um i just tapped in here with my text tool and i'm going to write tattooing I'm going to make sure that that is in black. Um, and what I did was, if I can zoom in here so we can really see, uh, I came up here. There's a little... Um, there it is. A little uh, warp text thing up here. It's like a little T on top of a Bezier curve. Um, and I came in here to, um, I believe I did flag. Uh, and then I changed the bend in it uh, just to give it kind of a, a little flourish. Um, and I suppose you could also use um, rise. Rise at, might actually be what we end up doing because I feel like flag does it a little too much, but rise kind of gives it a nice um, a nice movement while not warping each individual uh, symbol too much. So we might actually go with rise. Uh, for now, I don't really need it because we're going to hide that and we're going to we're going to redo the text because um, right now we're going to just focus on um, the painting portion. Um, cool. But we will yeah, come back to that simple. and do that. Um, I think you may have gained friends. Okay, good. Okay, thank you, Tim. <laughs> okay, so I am going to... I'm actually going to group all of my sketching here. Uh, hit G... And I'm going to turn this on a low opacity. What I might actually do is start a new file just to, to paint in because I want this to be like the size and shape um, of like a postcard. So I'm going to go file 
new and I don't remember the standard size for a postcard, but I think it's something like a six by nine or something like that. So we're going to go nine, six to so make sure it's oriented um, in like a, a widescreen kind of orientation. And then I'm also going to click artboards because um, I want to be able to add more artboards to what I'm working on. And I figure after I'm finished painting this and we make our um, postcard, then I can just create new artboards and start putting our other promos and art in the same file where we can see everything we've created. So I'll go with that. That looks about right as far as size and shape. Uh, I'm gonna snag this group and bring it over here and just drop this in here. Um, I may convert this to a smart object. I'll zoom out, transform it. Uh, and I'm just going to throw that right in there. I think I actually got, I kind of, I guessed, I guessed uh, for how yeah, big right. this would be. And I think yeah. that that's actually really accurate. Um, so that works for me. That's good enough for me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here and we are going to get to painting. So um, I, I mentioned earlier that I have been known to do a landscape or two. I'm going to move this dark saber. Um, you encouraged me to show off all of my weapons, Paco, and now I've got weapons falling everywhere. Now you got weapons falling all over you. Yeah, all over. The, the dark place. side is strong with them. Yes. Um, so I, I mentioned earlier that I do landscapes, um, and this is true, but landscapes is actually um, not a huge strong suit for me. And despite that, I still wanted to do a landscape for you because I think that this is the kind of project that could really easily kind of transition you into a landscape way of thinking because it's not actually necessary for you to do a huge amount of detail and stuff for a piece like this because we are gonna have like this giant, you know, piece of text in the center here. Um, so you kind of have to just suggest a landscape uh, when it comes to this. And to suggest the landscape means you only really have to hit, um, I guess the bare minimum you might say. Um, so we're gonna go over those points. And then if you'd like to expand upon yours, if you're working along with me, feel free. But if you are you know, new to landscapes or unfamiliar or uncomfortable with them, this is kind of a great bit of practice, I think. Um, so I know that I want to have the binary sunset. If anyone you have ever heard binary sunset terms when speaking about Star Wars, it's referring to the two suns on Tatooine. Um, I know that Very I want to put- Yes, super iconic. In fact, it's like a, a lot of people get tattoos of the binary sunset, which I think is cool. cool. Just the two dots. Um, I want to put a little um, hut uh, here and I want to put like some moisture towers um, around on the plane. And then we're going to suggest a bit of depth um, in the landscape here. Uh, so I am going to kind of block this in. I'll hit F on my keyboard just to bring me into this other mode. And I'm going to change my background to black because I prefer that. Um, and I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to sketch around. And I am going to create uh, this element of depth on the ground here. And it does not have to be crazy, crazy. Um, I think one of the main traps that I fall into myself when I personally start doing a landscape is I always think like, it has to be incredible. It has to be larger than life. And I get so caught up in the possibilities of the future for the piece that I stress myself out and then I don't actually make anything nice. <laughs> If that makes sense. Uh, so I hope that you folks will like join me and create some little um, landscapes and uh, take it easy, take it slow um, and just start uh, painting away. See what you come up with. I think also uh, doing like sand dunes for a landscape um, is a, a great way to practice because it's just sand. Um, and I'm not going to be hyper, hyper detailed with this. Um, but I do want to get my point across. So I'm going to use some really nice uh, kind of swirling, waving texture. Uh, 
and kind of suggest almost like water, I suppose, um, yeah. this waviness uh, to the ground. I think Rick has a very important question. Okay. Since it's a binary sunset, does that mean we need double the SPF? You may. Yeah, you may. Although I, I to tell you the truth, I don't think anybody on Tatooine is wearing sunscreen properly. No. I don't think any of them are. Maybe they have natural sunscreen since they grew up there. I Maybe doubt it. Hot. I've seen some it's Tatooine dead. residents looking pretty rough, to be honest. Pretty rough. It's pretty rough. Um, so I'm going to paint this ground. I'm also going to, real quick, I'm going to um, pull up some reference as well, just to have with me, which I probably should have done before we started painting. Um, but then maybe I can use the opportunity to talk about where I go to find reference. Um, yeah. One of my favorite places to go is Pinterest. I have thousands and thousands and thousands of Pinterest boards dedicated to different things. I've got some for hands and feet only. I've got some for faces only. I've got some um, for uh, clothing reference poses. Uh, I've got some for just colors. I've got some that just show uh, paintings of very interesting lighting situations and how light plays through glass and other transparent objects. Tons of stuff that I have collected um, over the years that really helps me. Um, I highly recommend using Pinterest. Also a great place to go um, is Behance, obviously, because Behance allows you to store like whole projects and um, search around for things. And it's all design oriented. I feel like uh, when I get on Pinterest, sometimes um, I find things that I wasn't looking for all the time. But typically when I search around on um on Behance, I always find what I'm looking for. Do you mind sharing um, your Pinterest inspiration or is that private? All good. Um, I, I would love to. I will make a Pinterest board of a lot of things and I will share it with you guys later. The only reason why I don't want to share it or show it is because I have a lot of nude reference in my Pinterest boards mm, a lot of times. It. Makes sense. Um, which is... And I would love to give you folks like all the stuff that I use, or maybe I can link it privately, but um, I don't know. I feel like yeah, I shouldn't link sense. you, but. With Adobe Live, <laughs> we, we usually like to keep it PG. That's, yes. that's the guidance on content and what we say. So makes sense, no worries. Um, but I mean, that's part of art. Uh, Cause I, you it's know, I much paint, a, paint I a lot of characters. And if mm -hmm. I am going to paint a character, I have to know if I'm going to paint the body, I have to know what's under the clothes, you know, and make sure that Very the true. fabric is hanging properly and all that good stuff. Um, okay. So I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of straighten this out. Cause I have like some pretty good reference that allows me to like really visualize. And I think that's uh, something that um, is like a big struggle for me is like my visualization um, when I start to paint um, is sometimes is sometimes lacking in the uh, department for landscapes um, because I'm used to painting uh, in you know through the lens of let me flip my canvas real quick I used to painting through the lens of um, doing a character um, and my portraits that I do I don't always do like tons of uh atmospheric backgrounds or detailed backgrounds with like scenes and things um it's it's more impressionistic uh and i like to use textures and color to suggest a mood um rather than paint something very specifically um in the back um, and that could be for a lot of reasons. It could either be that that's how I like to do it and that's my style, or it could be that, you know, I need some work in those areas. It's kind of a mixture of both. Um, and so when I begin to paint landscapes, I can sometimes get a little bit discouraged and feel um, like I can't see or visualize what I'm, what I'm going for. And so having reference up, I think is so necessary um and uh i i see a lot of people on the topic of reference asking is using reference cheating 
um, is using reference. Like, can't will you ever be able to paint without reference? Um, a lot of a lot of questions and concerns about using reference, and I feel like I feel like people get caught up in reference a lot. Like, am I supposed to be using it? If I have to use it, does that mean that I'm not good on my own at this? That sort of thing. Um, and I feel like reference can be used anytime by anyone, even if you are a professional that's been working in the industry for years and years and years, um, that is something that you, sh that you should be using. Um, and I think that it's not cheating to use reference so long as you are not plagiarizing what you're looking at yeah, for reference, yeah. you know? I, I think it's not cheating at all. I mean, I think especially if you're starting out, you need it. I mean, I know some professional painters that still use reference uh, yeah i follow this artist called scott listfield i'm a big fan of his work it's actually pretty sci-fi he kind of puts an astronaut in dystopian settings mm -hmm. um, and whenever he paints he actually photoshop composites what he's planning on painting and then uses that as a reference oh. to do the actual painting like a, so he's like got a like a ref yeah like a reference kinda. yeah yeah because he he needs to see how the astronaut looks with the landscape and i've seen his behind the scenes work and you know, I mean, it, as long as you get that painting and it, it, I mean, it's yours and it's not plagiarized. I mean, I don't think it's cheating at all. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, but I think, you know, I, I, I kind of fell into that a lot, too, because I was like, well, what if, you know, what if I'm using something as reference and it starts to look so mine starts to look so close to, you know, what I'm what I'm referencing that it's no longer like you, you could look at it and tell like, oh, she she used this. Um, photo as reference for this. Um, it, I'll give you some advice. Uh, if you use reference and your piece starts looking a, a lot like your reference, um, all you have to do is when you post it, say that you referenced a piece from so-and-so. Um, it does not diminish the value of the piece that you painted just because you relied very heavily on the work. I would say that the goal eventually would be to um, use the reference um, until you can build a visual library uh, powerful enough to kind of fuel your own ideas so you're not totally lost without a clue what to do every time you sit down um, to create. Um, but you need you need to utilize reference in order to get to that point. Um, and as you're learning, as you're utilizing um, reference and sort of coming to that point and developing your skill until you can do those things, um, your your pieces might look a lot like the reference that you're that you're using. And that doesn't mean you can't post it. It doesn't mean that you have to hide it. It doesn't mean that it's not worth enough because it's familiar. Um, it just means, you know, just say that you referenced a certain image and post it and show, you know, your growth as an artist. I used to just think if it looks like my reference, then everyone's going to know. And I'm not a good enough artist. And so I need to make something different. Nah. Nah. Just cite your reference. Um, and then as you yeah. get better and your pieces stop looking like your reference and you've got more of your own personal flair in there, then you don't have to. That's that's how I feel about it. I would love to know um, how everyone else kind of handles that. Yeah, we had some comments in the chat kind of talking about it. Um, see if I can find it. Yeah, so Tim says reference is just like a starting sketch. General Kenobi says you must do what you feel is right, of course. <laughs> and right below that, actually, we have Samantha in the chat our very own samantha shustari yo Adobe live what's going on sam what's going on i'm about to say what's up to sam hi sam uh but yeah very well well said about the uh reference sketches i think that's pretty spot on so very um good i've got stuff. this like sad little house going um is that I'm... supposed to be luke's home house yeah like you know like just one of the little huts that's out there i i feel like i feel like it could be better i feel like i'm i'm getting it down and i'm like eh, can i draw but that's you know i i as much as i dislike the feeling of like beginning to paint something that i'm not confident in especially when i'm streaming it's one of my favorite things to show because i know for certain that every single person um in this uh chat today has like started to draw something and been like oh my gosh this is not you know and it's kind of hard to get past that 
ugly stage, quote unquote, and still have confidence right. in the work. So I'm pushing through this ugly stage, um, hoping to inspire more confidence in you. That's what I'm doing today. That's awesome. Yeah, people are uh, painting along with us. Stony says, I think I just finished my BB-8. I started yesterday. I want yes. to do R2-D2 now. Yes. Very cool. She's doing all the droids. Do it. I love it. Um, I want to know who everyone's favorite droid is. Who's your favorite yeah. droid, Paco? Do you have a favorite droid? Um, I mean, I know the iconic ones. I think, I mean, if I had to do it RTD2, you just can't go wrong with the OG. This is true. You know, that's, you're not wrong. Yeah, my partner fell in love with uh, BB 8 while she watched the uh, the new movies. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh my gosh, that droid is so stinking cute. And I'm like, yeah, they made a pretty cool droid. He's pretty adorable. Um, I think that my favorite droid is um, K from. Rogue One, I actually really enjoyed K. That is a great droid. Yeah, I haven't seen Rogue One since it came out in theaters. He's um, funny. You're actually, he is, yeah. I So, like I said, I've been watching all the movies with my partner, and we actually watched that in theaters in New Zealand while we were there because I made oh, her go wow. watch it. But I haven't seen it since then. I think that was 2016, so I want to watch oh. that movie again. I, I do remember him killing it as a character. I'm like, this He's guy's cool. making the movie. Yeah. He's really cool. I, I also will um, give a mention. Um, that's my favorite uh, droid, like, from films. Um, I think my favorite droid overall, though, like, as far as games and extended universe and legends and all that stuff. Um, is anybody familiar with HK-47? Does anybody HK know who that is? HK-47. I don't see H the chat. Someone did shout out um, K-2 as zero, which I think is the same one from Rogue One, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but I, d I haven't heard of that one. So HK-47 <laughs> is, <laughs> is uh, in some of the novels, he's he, he changes hands a little bit, but he's Revan, he's Darth Revan's droid. And um, he is not friendly. <sighs> and, he, and he does not like living life forms but he follows Revan, like he really likes Revan, but I think he's like in his little droid system, he's uh, conflicted about it. Um, he is, <laughs> I can't really recite any of his jokes because I don't think that they're appropriate, um, but he's a funny dude. Um, there is a story where he loses Revan um, and he, he just starts walking across the galaxy, like, and I mean that literally, like he starts walking across the planet, finds himself on a ship, gets to another planet, keeps walking and keeps walking and keeps walking and walking for years, for like a decade until he finds him again. And the whole time he's just harassing people. Um, <laughs> it's, it's really- That sounds like a troll. He's he's like, yes, he's 100% just a, a troll droid for sure. Um, so if anybody knows, yeah, Knights of the Old Republic, it's, it's like a, a KOTOR era. Um, so if anybody is familiar with HK-47, uh, welcome him. <laughs> yeah, I just Googled him. He looks, uh, he looks pretty intimidating. He's an older droid too. He's yeah. like not, you know, he's not a new, he's not a spry young man at all. Um, I think maybe I don't like how I'm painting the sand. I think I want the sand to be more straight, like straight planes. And then under here, I think I'm gonna like kind of cross with a lighter color is gonna be the jam just to kind of show off this horizon a little bit. And I think I'll yeah. add more of a dark color here um, behind. We'll even get an even darker color just like right here off the edge. And that's starting to look a little bit, that's starting to look a little bit like um, a shadow and some kind of building or other. Uh, it almost looks more like a helmet just sitting there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding a little bit of details. I'm going to pull up an image of um, Luke's house um, just so I can see it. Uh, and I'm going to fix what needs fixing. So we're going to snag. I'm going to, I, I normally would not use the polygonal lasso tool, um, unless I'm 
because I'm selecting things like so specifically, but I am kind of enjoying this weird polygon vibe to this, even though it is like a painting, like it's very hard surface in a way. Uh, and I like that. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to keep this kind of vibe. Um, Nice. I, I love seeing all the different ways that people use Photoshop because the, the guest after us, Brady, he was just talking up the polygonal lasso tool the whole time. He's like, yeah. this is what I use to mask out subjects. And, you know, he didn't use select, select subject or the uh, quick select tool. He just used the polygonal lasso tool. That was his jam. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, like there's no right or wrong way to do things. Just whatever works for you. If that works for you, then by all means, go for it. I get to use, I get to uh, use, I get to um, mod for that uh stream oh, yeah. this week yeah right so on. i'm i'm modding in the chat uh after the challenge that comes up after this and i have really been enjoying um the stream so if you guys have not been tuning in to check out brady's work it's brady and uh andrew hawk rattle and they are a hoot uh, they are doing a great job and the posters are looking amazing so if you guys need another uh, kind of dose of Star Wars um, after this stream and the challenge, please come through and hang out with Brady and Andrew and me. Yeah, we're, we'll all be there. So yeah, great streams all around this week. Pretty much. It's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a superhero lineup of it like is, yeah. super cool yeah. stuff. I feel like that makes me sound pretentious. I didn't mean that way. I mean, it that no, way. Like, I mean, I the have lineup's to agree great. with you. It's... I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Got Val of Superman. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I mean, it's it's been very entertaining content. As you all know, I mean, I produce these shows and run them behind the scenes. And I, I have to admit, you know, this week has been very, very awesome content. And I just don't say that's it. I mean, all our streams are awesome, but I have personally had a lot of fun watching these. And a lot of it probably has to do with the fact that I'm also a Star Wars geek myself. But yeah. I do think the lineup has been pretty rock solid. You know, we got Val to come back on the guest seat, which is always awesome and a fun time. We got Brady. We had Jesus. Jay we Schuster. Had, uh, Jay, uh, the one original concept artist for the actual movies. That was really fun. Got a shout out to Renee. Like, Thanks for bringing uh, him on. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very fun stuff. So yeah, it's been a great week. Very, very entertaining, fun week. So we've got like a little settlement here. I'm going to throw in some like little tiny things here. That's just supposed to look like maybe there's some cargo sitting around i think would be cool um and i'm gonna leave it alone for a little bit and i'll come back to it here's a tip if you are painting something that you don't normally paint um when you start to get a little bit discouraged uh when it when as you approach a certain portions of the piece it's totally natural it's totally fine um take a break from that portion of the painting and move on to something else move on to a new part of it move on to um like a new area of your painting and i think that you will find um that when you you move on to a new place but you're still immersed in the work and you're still working on something on some other part of it, something else. Um, as other portions of the piece start to come together, uh, you you kind of subconsciously start formulating the right course of action for that other part. So I still want to come back to this, but I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add some interesting sandy kind of motion here in the ground. And I'm starting to realize that maybe I'll add some of this motion to this area over here. Maybe I'll incorporate that. And I think if I just kept staring over here at this place that I, I would have just kept working on the portion that I don't like, if that makes sense. Um, so break it up. Um, sometimes you need to take a break. Sometimes flip your canvas. Canvas flipping is yeah, we learned the greatest thing. Yeah, it, it's cool. all of a sudden you can see your piece um, with new eyes, which is why I just did it just now. Um, it works wonders. Oh, you know what? I'm going to grab, let me grab like a, like a lighter. Uh, what I want to do, since we have light coming from here, um, and I'm not being extra fancy with the lighting, but if I put a little bit of 
light right here on this weird shape. I didn't even mean to do this. If I put a little bit of light on this weird um, curve shape, it might actually look like sand dune. Oh, like I see kind what you mean. Raising. Yeah, little mini sand dunes. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Accidents. Um, all Happy I had to accidents. do was go work in another part of the part of the piece, and then yeah. suddenly I've and, got. And even flipping the canvas, right? It made you kind yeah. of see it that way too. Yeah. Yeah. Tim's got a good point. Um, he says, I always have to step away for a while and come back with fresh eyes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that's a very great tip. I, I've personally done that when I'm working on video edits. You know, you'll, you'll just take a mental break, walk around the block, and I'll come back and I'm like, oh my goodness, this looks terrible. What <laughs> did I do? You need, yeah, sometimes you need a fresh pair of eyes. And even taking that a little further, um, maybe somebody that you have within your personal life that you're very close to that you can just kind of give to them to lay a, literally a fresh pair of eyes on them can sometimes help. 100%. Um, so I have, a, I have a twin brother. There's somebody else out there in the world that looks just like me. We're the same height, same facial hair. Uh, we have grown up with many, many similar interests and he also does video production. Oh, so okay. whenever we're working on video edits, uh, either personal or for work, I always send him whatever it is, right? Nice. And he, he just, you know, he talks shop in that world where he's able to just see things that I haven't because I've been staring at this edit for days now that it's just easy to overlook things because mm -hmm. you're just so familiar with the content. But when you get a new fresh pair of eyes, they'll point things out and be like, uh, dude, did you know that you have a typo here? I'm like, I had no idea. Yeah, because you know? you've been looking at it for so know. long that it's kind of, it's the same thing. There's a word for it and I've looked up the word for it before, but I can't remember it off the top of my head right now. When you stare at a word so long that it starts to look like it's not spelled right. Oh, um, interesting. You know, yeah, I totally see that. So it's the same thing with your with your art. Uh, when you stare at your work for so long, you stop recognizing the mistakes because they become right. familiar. Yeah. Um, and exactly. so having another pair of eyes or flipping your canvas is a great way to go about things. Um, so this is kind of cute. Like I said, we don't have to like make this a serious um, landscape. I, I when I do landscapes, I, I spend like a, a super long amount of time on them. Um, and how much time do we have? We we were about 45 minutes in, right? Yeah, we we're about 45 minutes in. So okay. got plenty of time. We're going to be doing the artist spotlight in about is it 40 ish minutes? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this um, because we are going to do some other things, but uh, I don't know. Is there a dog off. barking in the background or am I going crazy? Uh, it, you hear something? I have loud dogs and I have two neighbors okay. on either side of me that have loud dogs. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. I thought it was the music. I'm like, am I going crazy with this? Are track? they, is it super intrusive? I can't really it's hear not it super intrusive. my headphones in. Okay. No, we got the music in the background that can help make okay. it subtle. Smooth it over. Um, Smooth it over. I was going to say something. Um, oh yeah, I want to, I want to keep in mind too, that we're going to have like a huge amount of text over this. Maybe we'll throw, uh, some text in right now, just so I can look at it. Cause I want to see what, what we're actually going to view around the edges of this. Smart. And I don't want to spend so much time painting something that's not going to show. Um, nice. I need to flip the painting though. So let me group that and transform it. And I'm gonna actually, no, I'm going to, um, I'll duplicate. This is what I do sometimes. And I know that you can <laughs> convert to smart object and all that stuff. But what I want to do is I'm going to duplicate this group and I'm going to hide it just so that I have it. And I can come back to that, that state if I want. Um, and so then I'm kind of your going backup, to, like a checkpoint, right? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. It's just, you know, so I have it. Um, and there's a lot of ways to do that, but I like to do it this way. It's easy. Um, and then I'm going to, on this top group, control E just to, to merge all that. Uh, and then I'm going to, cause when I control T, you can see there's other stuff outside of here. And I want to flip this perfectly with, without flipping horizontal. I want to flip it because my text is already in here a certain way. So I am going to control A, which selects the borders of my canvas and control J. 
uh, and then I'll delete what I just, control J is duplicate selection. Um, or if you don't have anything selected, it's duplicate layer, um, everything on the layer. I'm gonna delete what I just duplicated from. And then I have this and if I control T, it's just the borders there. Cause I duplicated that with the selection of the border of my canvas. So I only have that and none of that extra, whatever that was um, on the outside. So I can flip it horizontal. Um, and I think, what can we see? Ah, that's kind of cute. There we go. I wonder yeah. what it would look like if I squished it down, if it would look too squat. We could also bump Tatooine up. Um, I did not even mean for it to look so nice with the flow of Tatooine, but it does look pretty nice with the flow it of the does. bottom of the word. Yeah. So we've got a little sand dune, a little building in there. It's looking honestly better than I thought it was going to look. I'm pleased. Yeah, it was a good call putting that text on there so that you know how it can affect the composition, right? Yeah, and also, you know, really don't paint stuff you don't have to paint because I was going to like yeah, yeah, start getting point. in there and doing a bunch of stuff and I don't have to because look how much of it actually shows. It's not that much. Yeah. Working smarter, not harder, folks. Yes. Um, I'm going to turn the opacity down on this even more because I just want to see sort of where it is. Um, I'd also like to do some formations in the sky that doesn't look just like I painted the sand. Um, so I'm going to peek because I have a Pinterest board of clouds. <laughs> clouds. So I could just look at clouds and see how people are doing clouds. Um, also, I think it's really, so I think you should always use photo reference uh, when you do use reference. I think you can use other people's art um, as inspiration and reference sometimes, but um, I do, while I do look at artistic renditions of clouds in this example, um, I do like to pull up pictures of actual clouds too, because this is really important. And this is something I learned the hard way. When you use photo reference for your artwork, you take that reference into you and you illustrate or paint or design your interpretation of life from that photo. When you only use other people's art as reference, your art becomes your interpretation of someone else's interpretation of life, if that makes sense. Um, so other people, they might have techniques and things that you like, and I say, go for it and test out those techniques. And if you see something like, oh, I love how this person painted this. I want to try that technique and try that approach. That's great. I do that all the time. But when you're working on a piece, I would say, always try to keep in mind the real life version of what you're trying to illustrate get some some facts in there and observe it for yourself so that your style doesn't develop into something that looks like somebody else's um or you never learn really how to interpret the world through your own creative voice because it's derived from somebody else's idea of what it's supposed to look like um i yeah. hope that makes sense <laughs> It does. I think that's a very, very good pro tip. That's a good thing about watching these streams, right? As you said, Val, you learned that the hard way. And maybe that wasn't shouted out to you early in your artistry career. But now that yeah. you know, could uh, could give you some good pro tips moving forward in your career. I, the, I say that I learned it the hard way um, because I spent a lot of time... Um, I wanted to paint like a very particular artist. I wanted to paint just like him. Um, I thought that his art was like the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I was like, I got to learn how to do this. And what I found myself, <laughs> I found nice. myself in this situation where um, I, I was painting and I was painting the way I thought that he painted. Um, and I was trying my darndest to, uh, get everything right exactly like he was doing things but what i was doing was number one i was not focusing on the the basics of art and design i was i was skipping over all of the 
anatomy and um, lighting and perspective and like all these things, which you don't need to be a master at uh, to make art. You can make art in any any place, any way, for any reason. But I wanted to be somebody that painted for a living and I was ignoring the lessons that I should have been learning uh, artistically in favor of essentially copying this other artist because I just wanted to, I wanted my work to look like his super bad. Um, and what I ended up finding myself uh, in, the position I found myself in was I had spent a few years working on my art, uh, spending a lot of time, you know, people commenting on my art saying, hey, that kind of looks like so-and-so's work. Oh. Um, and then when it came down to actually getting a job and doing uh, work for a client, I realized that not only had I spent a bunch of time trying to emulate an artist that I admired, I also only learned to draw the things that he drew most often. I, I didn't really have a, a basis for how to approach something on my own because I've been leaning on somebody else's creative voice for a long time. So, you know, he drew dragons and, uh, and stuff, but it's like not every client is going to ask me for dragons. And so I like, it's maybe this is like an oddly specific situation, but it, it, really messed me up for a while where I was just like, oh my gosh, what have I been doing? And then I heard somebody say, like, have you been only using this guy's art as reference? And I'm like, well, I just, you know, I want to be like him. And he's like, yeah, but uh, you you need to be like yourself um, and, and be somebody who admires other artists, but you need to be like yourself and you need to look at real reference and understand what you're painting and not just try to put the lines down like somebody else does. Um, and yeah, when I, I started doing that, kind of kind of changed how I approached art altogether. Yeah, I think the chat agrees. Uh, Brandon says good advice right there, Val. It's highly yeah. situational too. Say yes, yes, <laughs> so, such good advice. No, I mean, I think it's great. Um, you know, I, I think just kind of basing your art based on one person, you know, it could definitely get you going in the right direction. But mm -hmm. as you said, it's, you know, now it's surprising. Oh, it kind of looks like so-and-so. It's like, oh, do I really want to be known as the person that like mm -hmm. is looking like that person? So yeah, I like the idea of the uh, inspirational cocktail. Yeah. Right. Where you look at all these different references, all this different inspiration and mood board. And then you take little bits of each one, right? And you kind of formulate it into your own cocktail of art. And I think that's a great way to kind of get started in the creative, whatever your discipline may be. And then the more you stick with that, the more I think you you may and will be able to find your own path or your own um, artistic interpretations or your own, your own um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, your own creative your, voice. Your own your art, own I guess. Art. Yeah, yeah, your own creative. Your own yeah. style. Um, and yeah. that's, I think that too is like a big, a big thing that I see a lot of people asking. It's like, how do I find my style? style. How do I, yeah. Style. Yeah. That's the one. How yeah, do I find exactly. my style? Everybody everywhere, all the time, every day wants to know how do I find my style? And yeah. I, I think it's a journey. I actually made a video on it and it's on YouTube of how you find your style. Um, but some cliff notes, uh, for it, if you're curious, I believe that finding your style is a collection of a lot of things. Um, most importantly, I think that your style is your interpretation of the world. It's the way that you look way at life and you problem solve to figure out how to get that down on the canvas. Um, and everybody takes their own natural approach, inspired and influenced by other artists, but your style is how you problem solve uh, in art. It's how you decide to approach something and other people's style, you know, you could come about it like saying, oh, you know what? I really love crosshatching. Crosshatching brings me joy. I just, I want to do a bunch of crosshatching and then you're known for a style that includes a lot of crosshatching. That's fine. And that is also another way that you can develop it. But regardless of how you, where's the end of this? Regardless of how you, <laughs> there we go. Regardless of how you, um, 
approach things as far as like techniques that you like to use and colors you like to use and all that kind of stuff there's still this basis in your interpretation of the world around you and how you problem solve to get that onto a canvas determines a great deal of the style that you have as you start to become more comfortable doing exactly that um and so i think that for me personally when i started to think about it that way um i stopped worrying about when i was going to find my style so much it stopped yeah. bothering me i stopped you know feeling like i'm not going to find it or i need to try something new or i need to do this other thing i stopped worrying about it because i was like if all i have to do is learn how to paint something and then my style will come through based on how i feel comfortable approaching painting that thing then in order to find my style, all I have to do is just spend time creating. Yeah. Uh, we do have some questions from the chat that I want to get to, Val. Oh, please. I see you, friends. Don't worry. I'm always reading the chat. Uh, first of all, I see Kita Jones in the chat. What's up? What's up, Kita? She said, she said, what's going on? So I see you, Kita. It's good to see you in the chat. She has a question. Are you using a tablet? I am using a Wacom Cintiq uh, 16 HD. Nice. Um, yeah, cool. so I can, I've got my little uh, display tablet. Uh, I used a regular tablet for many, many years though. Um, and as I said yesterday, uh, if you can't afford a Cintiq, uh, that's totally fine. Use a tablet. Um, I used a tablet for a long time and yeah. uh, it served me very well. Very cool. Um, and then another question, um, how do you network and connect with clients slash fellow artists? Um, I... I've made a lot of friends over the years uh, in the art industry because I've just been streaming and talking to people um, for so long now. But when I first started out and I was like, how the heck am I going to find clients? How do I get people to follow me on social media? How do I get people to care about what I'm doing <laughs> and look at it? Um, I started streaming. I streamed on Twitch. I started streaming on Twitch in 2014. And all of a sudden I've been posting my art online for years um, and after one stream, somebody asked me if I'd draw something for them for money. After uh, one, one stream, That's all it took, huh? um, wow. and it's it's it like totally shocked me because I'll tell you my very first art stream I ever did. I ruined my painting because I was so nervous, my hands were shaking, oh my and I goodness. I was I was terrified because I had been streaming on Twitch um, as a gamer. I was like, I'm gonna be a pro gamer. I'm gonna play Hearthstone. I'm gonna be the greatest Hearthstone gamer girl in the world and it turns out i love video games i love to play them but i'm not very good at them um so that didn't work out it didn't happen for me um and then somebody was like hey you said you draw pictures right and i was like yeah and they were like you should stream because twitch has this fun thing called twitch creative now and that was like the dawn of streaming for me um and i started and then I went from Twitch to Adobe on Twitch and then from Adobe on Twitch to Adobe Live on Behance. Um, but uh, when people can come and look at your work and watch you, if somehow I, I, I got more requests for, you know, and clients than I ever, ever did streaming um, than just posting my work online and stuff. And it's like, I, I feel like streaming networks for you if that makes sense. Yeah, I can. Um, and there is no shortage of internet personalities or people looking to become internet personalities or people who are looking to be influencers or YouTubers or Instagram people. There's no shortage of people like that who need somebody like you to draw them an icon, make them a banner, design them an overlay for their video. Like there are so many people who are looking for someone to create pieces of art like that. And you can start with that. And those are easier jobs. And that's what I did. I designed emotes for Twitch. I made overlay overlays for gamer streams. Um, I designed like painted little icons so that people could um, have a drawing of themselves as their icon on Twitter, you know, stuff like that. There's always, always somebody who is looking for that kind of work. Um, by the way, I'm warping, so I've like painted, I really like these cloud shapes. I feel like it needs to be more dramatic. So I just transformed this layer and I'm just gonna warp this and kind of give it, I think like a little arc. I think that could look cool. I'm not sure, but I just wanna give it kind of a different vibe. So I'm doing that. 
Nice. Looks good. Uh, do want to shout out, we have the Artist Spotlight Countdown that popped up a little bit ago. So we have about 25 minutes. And then we'll stop the work and spotlight somebody from our community. Um, we got to figure out how we're going to show that, actually. <laughs> um, I do you can, have it? Yeah, I can I send can... it to you. Um, I'll send it to you on that Slack channel. Yeah. I'll do it at Val. And then you just pull it up whenever it's time to do that. So I'll do that on the back end. Uh, we got another question from the chat from Chelsea. They're asking, how do you get people to pay instead of doing the dreaded? I'm an influencer, so it should be for free mindset. That seems to be so prevalent. Oh, it happens all the time. It happened to me like two weeks ago where somebody was like, oh, you know, come, come and do free stuff for me. Um, and I will shout you out and I'm super important and popular and my company's great. And that should, that would really work wonders for you. That would really be great for you. Let me tell you a bit of information no, that will help you not feel bad about turning them down and being very blunt with a no thank you when it comes to people like that. If a company or a single influencer has so much clout that the mere mentioning of your name by them would bring you enough money to support yourself, they would be able to afford to pay you. They would be able to pay you how to do it, like to do that for, you, for them. There's no, I can't think of a single company or influencer out there who just mentioning your name to people and saying, oh yeah, um, Saya Luna painted this for me. And then all of a sudden you get flooded with, with money. Um, I can't think of a single person who has the power to do that, who can't also pay you what you're worth. Um, so there's, you know, I, you know, I, I just can't think of one where it works that way. So I would say, no, sorry. There, there are some free jobs that you could maybe do. I've done some free work for people that I thought, um, you know, like they're, they're pals of mine or a family member or something, you know, and I'm, I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'll help them out. I'll, I'll, I'll do this or somebody who, um, I've done a few free icons uh, for streamers that were just getting started, didn't have any money um, to to pay me to do it, and I just was like, "I'll I'll sketch you an icon, you know, and help you out." Because I remember being at that point. But if I do free work, it's on my terms. That's yeah. you know, it's 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 like on my the, terms. Yeah, I like the answer is, "Hey, sorry, exposure doesn't pay the bills." Yeah. So not not gonna but work. i think what you said yeah it's uh you know if you if you think you're so big that you know oh hey i'm gonna shout you out that's gonna be great for you well if you're so big then you have money yeah you, know, you should have money if you're even offering this so and you can pay me what i'm worth mm -hmm. and that's that's the that's the I thing agree. um but also when it comes to dealing with clients i think this is good i think i'm gonna leave it like this i could maybe add some uh more details at some point but i like this so um we're going to start designing this, I think. Um, I think that when it comes to clients in general, um, talking about your price um, or their budget or both right off the bat is a great rule of thumb. I've never, um, I've, I've never had somebody actually pay me or not become a problem um, who didn't want to talk about money at the very beginning. That's a red flag. If you know, yeah, it's a hundred percent a red flag. I agree. If they're they're beating around the bush about you know what they can do for you and you know what you can do for them, and you ask them, you know, what's your budget or, um, you know, just anything pertaining to money uh, or mentioning your prices to them, and they gloss over it, and they what they do. This is a, like a common thing: is you say, "Hi, yes, I am open for work." Um, I could do this. Um, these are my prices, uh, or what is your budget and what, tell me more about your project. If they gloss over how much money you want or how much money they have and go directly into telling you all about, uh, what they want you to do for them and what their project is about. They're just talking about themselves. They're not giving you any indication that they intend to pay you at all. That's, that's bad news. Anytime that's ever happened to me, um, it's been bad news. 
Yeah. I think Tim's got a good point, and I, I've seen this a lot actually in the industry, but he's saying, I also get a deposit usually 30 to 50% depending on the job. So mm. yeah, I mean, if yeah. if they're not willing to pay a deposit up front just to get um, your services contracted, then I think that's also a big red flag. I think anybody that's legit is willing to pay for artists and their worth, then they'll usually be okay paying a deposit. Just kind of establish that handshake and get the ball rolling. Yeah, I, I asked for um, 50% up front. Um, there's been a, a, a couple times where um, a company, like sometimes larger companies that work with you, they will not give you 50% up front. They'll give you a smaller percentage since it's the first time they've worked with you. Um, and that's happened to me a few times. Uh, but I always ask for money to start. I'm not going to jump into three months of work for you and have nothing you know, in, and I'm just yeah. working for free until eventually I get paid. Um, and that becomes more prevalent and more important, the larger the jobs are that you start to take. But even when I was just, you know, drawing little icons, uh, for people, uh, send me 50% of the money. I want to know number, I want number one, I want money while I'm working. I want to survive while I'm doing the project. <laughs> um, and number two, if you say that you don't want to send me 50% of the money, you might not have been, a, been going to, send me the money at all you they know can't afford me yeah so and it's good to know your worth right you know yeah well you're probably at that point in career where you know what you're worth and you're not going to accept anything lower than that and that's good right you know if people can't afford you they can't afford you yeah so. and i i do still get really nervous about it though I, I will say i have a very strict policy on what i will and will not do what my prices are um, but that does not mean it's not difficult for me to lay down the law, so to speak. I'll say I, I do still struggle with it sometimes, especially when I'm dealing with an unpleasant situation that happens sometimes where people are, you, you tell them what you can and cannot do for them for the amount of money that they have available. And sometimes people get mad. Um, that happens every once in a while, not often, but no. every once in a while, um, I, I have a lot of anxiety about naming my prices sometimes, even though I've been naming my prices for the better part of a decade. Um, but, uh, it still happens, you know, you still get nervous. My advice to you, if you are nervous about things and, um, you're learning how to do all this, uh, and feel like you lack a little bit of confidence when it comes to to it um is i have a list of the boxes that i need to check the t's to cross the i's to dot whenever i'm approaching a new client and um i've practiced writing out the wording for certain things depending on rather i am dealing with a very pleasant uh, understanding client or somebody who has a bad attitude um and i've i've practiced these things um so that if i find myself in that situation i don't feel like i am lost and stranded or scared and i can stick out for myself yeah um, you know how to deal with it yeah um, i think carol has a good point um even with a proof of stamp over it they get your ideas that's a good point you know if you're having trouble with people paying mm -hmm. for whatever reason uh what i usually do when i used to freelance a lot with video edits is i would put a big old fat uh work in progress stamp over mm -hmm. it right and or I would just put my name on it, like Francisco Siller, not final. And yeah. then I'd send it to them. And then they'd be like, hey, let's get rid of that watermark. I'm like, yeah, as, nah. <laughs> as soon as you pay, as long as you pay, I'll get rid of it. And then, you know, the next day I see a, a, a transfer into my PayPal balance. So yep. that, that trick worked very well. Yep. You know, it's they got the final product. It's within their reach, but you just have a giant ugly watermark on it. And you're like, hey, you want that off? Mm -hmm. Pay the rest of the 50 percent. So. I am actually really happy with this, like the way that it's the, looking great. Yeah. the suns the, look. Cause the I binary like, sunsets, I think made a lot to yeah. it too. It's very I, I, cool. I feel like it, ha like it adds like having the little sun on the, uh, the dark cloud and the larger sun over the white looks really cool. I don't know where I'm going to put the text though. Cause we need to put, um, oops. Uh, I want to put greetings from Tatooine, and then I want to put double the sun, double the fun. Double so, the sun, double the fun. Gotta I feel like it. it's perfect. <laughs> greetings from dot dot dot. 
Um, and I had a, yeah, Caligari script. I wanted to do that. Um, I feel like this is warped in some way, so I need to get in here and look at my character styles. Uh, black and the heck's going on? I feel. Hold on. I'm not in my character styles. Okay. Yeah, that needs to be at 100. No, I don't want to type 100. Come on, furniture. <laughs> I want to type 100 in here because that was, it's like, there we go. Now it's the proper ratio. Now it looks like it's supposed to look. Um, and I also, I might want to arc this text too. I, I don't know if that's going to look great, um, but but maybe the greetings from can be right here or up here or let's see if we can um let's see if we can kind of curve this a little bit i think arc and we'll bring it down this way I just want to do this very slightly um, and I don't know if that's gonna come on I'm gonna bring this down here I think I can arc the other side of it yeah horizontal there we go um, just so that it kind of comes up a little more on that side and I don't know if it's enough to make it the design choice look very deliberate and that's the thing when you're going to do something fancy it has to look deliberate and if it doesn't look deliberate it looks like you made a mistake i think mm -hmm. the from is a little too scrunched i don't know how i feel about it um, what's everybody doing in chat uh, we're just hanging out, we're talking a lot about uh, clients dealing with rates, mm. how you go about setting your rate, how you feel comfortable doing it. You know, I, I, oh man, it's a fine line, and there's so much, so many books out there and information about how to handle rates and clients. Um, but I'm gonna take it one step further and be say that it's really something that you're gonna dial in the more you do it, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. I, you know, I. I I don't expect anybody to just figure it all out the second they start freelancing. There's going to be a lot of trials. It's going to be a lot of errors, uh, but that is how you learn. And the more you stick with it, and I promise you this, the more you stick with it and the longer you do it, you will figure it out, right? And you're going to find out something that works for you and something that works for clients. And you're going to be more comfortable billing clients. You're going to be more comfortable with those services that you can provide. And you're going to be more comfortable pricing your work according to what you think you're worth. Right. Um, but definitely do your research, you know, know the area that you live in, know what the market's like. There's a lot of great communities out there that you can kind of decide what, uh, what the good market rate is going for the services that you provide in your area. So definitely go off of that and then know how you compare to those services. So you have a good baseline to start off with. Um, I'm looking at classic postcards too, by the way, that was a excellent what you just said. I totally agree. Um, and I'm pulling up some new reference because I kind of want to see how other um, classic postcards do. Some of them actually do curve the text and some of them do not. Like the secondary text, um, as far as like the greetings from and this and that. Uh, and they have a greetings from Narnia, Kingdom of Aslan. I love this. General um, Kenobi says, good, twice the price, double the pay. <laughs> very good reference. Very good Count Dooku reference. <gasps> okay, let's do a flag for this one, too. Let's... Just a quick time check, Val. We got about 10 minutes before we're going to jump into that artist spotlight. But as right. always, we will have some time to come back and do any last minute finishing touches. Okay. 
Um, I am, oops, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this distortion real quick. I'm going to turn that down to zero. Um, I am going to kind of leave this for now. I'm going to put some texture in the Tatooine um, text and I am going to, why is my life, my library is open. I don't want my libraries open. Stop. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, add a little bit of texture into Tatooine and I am going to, I'm gonna close these real quick cause they're bothering me. Um, I'm not sure, I think I just clicked a button that I've never clicked in Photoshop before. Cause now all of a sudden I've got a lot of stuff happening in my workspace <laughs> that I, I don't like. Can I fix it? Perhaps. What's going on? Is it grouping these, um, all your layer um, panels? I, yeah, there, that's what I want is for it to just be okay. hovering like yeah. this, but I, for whatever reason, it was like showing yeah, all of stacking. my, yeah. yeah. And this weird. is super long for some reason. I don't know why. What? Um, I just moved it on to my other. Oh, okay. I was like, it disappeared. Uh, yeah. Cause it's like appearing very long and I need to, sorry about that. That's odd. No worries. Um, that sort of works. Let me make it slightly shorter. Um, I'm going to put some texture into the Tatooine text. Um, I'm going to overlay some subtle colors in there. Um, and then we can, I think this one will be mostly done and then we will, um, throw some, uh, graphics on the other pieces. Um, I think this one looks actually pretty, pretty legit right now. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the curved text. Um, I might do a version of this text that does not have the wave and no and just see how that works i'm just kind of experimenting a little bit with it double the sum double the five exclamation um because i do kind of i don't want it to be super empty at the bottom here and i feel like having the text down here is cool. It doesn't really go all the way over though. So I don't know um, if that looks the best it could look, but I think maybe we won't worry about it so much because I can always tweak it later. Uh, I think we've yep. got a pretty like good chunk of design done on it. Um, and I'm proud of it. Yeah, it's looking great. I do like the double the sun, double the fun in the bottom right. I think it does a good job utilizing that space there. Okay. Um, I guess I could also I could also like do like a little um, quarter turn kind of thing for this greetings from, and it doesn't have to be slanted or waved in any way because a lot of them also have that where it's just turned slightly. Some of them flow with the curve of the word, um, and some of them don't. So I don't think that I have to do that. And I think that that looks a little bit better, kind of at least turned at that angle right. um, that it has. And I can maybe make it a little smaller because this can be slightly smaller if I want it to um, just throw it there. I just don't want it to start a tangent with the edge of the sun and the sunset. And I don't want it to be totally straight and getting closer to this T than it was to this T. But this probably works. This will work. Yeah, and the community agrees. Um... Kita saying, I love how this is turning out. <laughs> General Kenobi says, this brings balance to the force. Yes. Saya saying, they love it. Uh, so yeah. I'm so Maybe glad. Community agrees. It's looking good. Okay, let's go ahead and group this and let's throw some color on it. Um, you said we have about, I'm sure we have like seven. I uh, read about minutes. six minutes until okay. we'll hop on over to the artist spotlight for a little bit. So let's finish this one. And then when we come back from the spotlight, we'll throw some text and some graphics on the other pieces. Um, I'm going to do, I, I don't think that Tatooine, while it has a sky and everything, I don't think Tatooine really has like a blue sky. Let's be honest. I don't think it's that sort no. of place. I it's think got it's that, uh, tan it's and like tan. 
Yeah, it's like, have you seen the meme? It's like Mexico on film. Yeah. It just has like that like sepia orange tone filter. 100%. That's exactly. <laughs> that's kind of what I, that's the vibes I get with Tatooine. It's not blue. It's just very orange tinted. It is film Mexico, 100%. Film I wonder, Mexico. I wonder where experience. it was actually filmed. I don't, I don't uh, know, actually know where Tatooine? those scenes were filmed. Yeah. Yeah. So I know some parts of it were actually filmed in Tunisia. I, okay. I think I'm saying that right. Um, oh gosh, somebody correct me if I said that wrong. I'm going to feel awful. Uh, but then they actually filmed some of it in Death Valley as well here in California. Okay. So there's a lot of places they filmed in California during the um, OG movies. Uh, I am a huge fan of the Redwoods. I think they are some of the oh, coolest yeah. things to ever exist. You yep. can only find them in one place ever in the world, and that's in California. So fun fact, in Endor, um, they filmed that in the Redwoods in Mendocino, which is in Northern California. So... Uh, I, uh, I remember driving through there with my partner. I'm like, man, this is Endor. It's so cool. Amazing. Yeah. Get you a little speeder. Get, get you out there with a little hat yeah, on. I want to get like Luke's lightsaber and like dig it there and take a picture and be like, oh yep. yeah, Luke was here. Yep. <laughs> All right. So I'm adding some colors. I like these colors. They're not, you know, like crazy Tatooine. I think what I can do is I can come in with like a soft round brush uh, and like do some, some, like yellowish highlights i think but i you know i i think that just for adding um color really quick that that's pretty pretty cool i think this is looking awesome i'm like, starting awesome to enough where i want to hang this it. up in my wall yeah oh so cool. i'm so glad i'm having fun with it um and i yeah, think that i fun. would also um come in uh, and maybe I'll do a tiny bit of it just because I know we're coming to a close here or um, coming to a stop with the artist spotlight. Um, but I would take like a darker shade of, of this uh, and just kind of bring out the, the details of it just a tiny bit more. So like not all this stuff is just like lost and it has its own definition over here and it's not, you know. Um, so I would just kind of bring that out on the side there again um but i think this is good and then the last thing what time is it we just still got like four minutes um yeah. i'm going to come into this tattooing this top um white tattooing and i am going to create a new layer and i will make this a clipping mask and i'm going to grab some of these colors this is almost like I guess it's more sunset, actual sunset colors, even though we have the binary sunset up in the sky. Um, but I don't think that matters too much. Um, I'm going to paint in here. We'll get some of this. And just nice. put some color in here. And I want it to go in a different direction than, so like for the clouds, the clouds are going like, you know, from bottom left to upper right. And I want mm -hmm. this to go from top right to bottom left with that like kind of vibe. And I want it to also be slightly different from the movement of the text itself, because if the text itself um, matches the, the movement perfectly, then I think it'll start to look a little too uniform. And we kind of want a little bit of something, something in here, like a little, so that not everything's looking flat. So I'm just gonna something Love something it. is an so official cool. term, by the way. <laughs> it's, a, it's an official art tool term. Just a little something something. That's how. Just a little something something. Yeah, this is something something. Um, but I might, you know, what I'm trying to do here is kind of suggest like how rock forms and has, you know, various uh layers to it um i might just paint bucket in some of this yellow color too maybe a little bit less and clipping mask that and then kind of hit it with a blending mode just so it's blending mode, yeah yeah just a little bit that looks kind of cool that streak of red in there is a little harsh but ooh. That's kind of cool. Let's grab my hue and saturation. Let's make that a little bit darker. Kind of getting a, uh, are you familiar with the Badlands in Utah? Uh, sort of. 
Yeah, it's uh, got crazy rock formations that just have different like gradient colors all within that spectrum. Like in slices. Uh, so it's very cool. Very yeah, like in slices. Yeah. It's like very deserty, very dry, but yeah, I like I like that touch to it. Thanks. Um, and then so I, I think saying, it's wow, almost... insane. I love Val Arts so much. Aww. I Thank you. So, I'm yeah. so glad yeah. you guys are liking it. I'm having a really good time painting yeah, it. So I'm having a blast. Um, but I think it's probably time for our spotlight now, I assume, that right? it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I sent it to you on our, on the chat. Um, um, so, so if you want to bring it up, we can just go over that together real quick. Yeah. We'll a little bit of time to go back to the design. So um, our artist spotlight today is... Um, a friend of mine. Oh, um, yay. Very yeah. Cool. And I really, I really love his art. If I can find a way to like, um, actually center this on my screen. So this is Jay Hansen arts. Uh, some of you might actually recognize him. Jay he, yeah. Jay Hansen is a streamer on, um, Twitch. Um, super, super nice guy. He does a lot of, um, like comic book, Marvel, uh, themed kind of stuff. And, um, I think his posters and things are just really, really cool. He does a lot of stuff, um, with, uh, just like the form of the faces and stuff that he does. I just think are so funny. He does like a lot of really funny pieces as well, what? which I just think are, is this, <laughs> why not? This right. On... Did this actually happen in uh, I don't think Italy, so. Sonny, or did he make this up? I have no he idea. He made this up by himself. It's amazing. <laughs> this is really cool. Uh, but he does That's hilarious. He does so many things that are just so cool, and he also does a lot of like practice streams in the community where he does like um uh what's the word I'm looking for? Just based on this word, um like studies and things. You know, he's a, mm -hmm. he's kind of just a really studies. positive, yeah, yeah, encouraging dude. Um, I, I think he's it. a great artist, and he has uh, so many pieces that. that just so crack me up. Um, yeah. this one is probably one of my most favorite pieces that he has. I want this on my wall. Um, I was like a huge fan of um uh, Kingpin. Um, especially specifically in the uh, Marvel TV shows that are out uh, right now. And this painting of Kingpin, I feel like is like, like it's seriously, good. it's just super legit and super cool. Yeah. Um, I like the cityscape in the bottom too. I just noticed that. Yeah. And just like yeah. putting it on a card, I feel like works just the whole framing of it is really great. Um, and then the cityscape, not only is a nice touch, but it also really ties in the white silhouette of the crown behind him with like the nice texture. And I just feel like it, it's just a really well-rounded piece. Um, and I love it. So um, this is one of my favorite ones. Um, I want to scroll through and find, cause he has like a lot of um, like, he does like a lot of studies, a lot of like, movie studies and things, which are really, really cool. Um, this is one of my favorite ones legit. that he did. Yeah, this looks great. Like his his sense of um, like form and color and lighting and everything is really, really great. Um, but he has some Star Wars some Star in here, Wars. which I'm going to find. Ooh, Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yeah, there so there's is. some Star Wars in here. Um, and then I think actually my second favorite piece that he has ever done um, is in here somewhere. He did a John Wick. Um, this awesome right here. Dude, look at this uh, Thanos. Thanos. It's so That's good. That's pretty cool. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's one of my favorite pieces. This one and the Kingpin one, they just like really really get me um so Val, you are a baddie aren't you Val <laughs> loves her villains i do i do she i loves do her villains and he it, it, it doesn't hurt that he's painted them just so well like i so was well, looking I at this and this is one of the pieces that i like um i thought when i looked at it like i want to practice trying to paint a face like this like because i would never think to add all of the detail in his lips and his chin and his forehead and all that stuff that it's not like a style that really comes naturally so when i saw this it inspired me i was like i have to paint something right now and that's what jay hansen's awesome. work does to me a lot is like i look at his work and i have to paint um so I, I hope that you folks will give him a follow and check Yeah, him everybody out. go give him a follow. I think his work um, is amazing. Yeah, um, he's got Nicholas a Cage. The Nick Cage is so good. You can't cage the Nick. Yes, you can't. You really can't. You can't cage the Nick. That's great. Um. So, yeah. 
check out yeah. uh jay hansen yeah, check out jay hansen art everybody everybody give him a, a follow yeah throw him some love i think he's got amazing art very inspirational inspirational he's oh, we'll but john wick yeah, did we'll he actually do that in the movies i haven't seen all of them i think this uh, might be this is an amazing scene like I haven't seen the John Wick movies in a, in a while, but this to me, I didn't know if it was John Wick or if it was just specifically um, I, Keanu Reeves. Or I think I might know where it is. I think they revealed he was going to be in Cyberpunk. Oh, and okay. Someone yells something like "You're amazing." You're breathtaking. Like, no, you're amazing. <laughs> yeah. so it might have been that, which is an amazing capture and rendition of that scene. So very cool. That's great. That's also also I like who paints a hand from this kind of perspective and makes it look right i can't i can't yeah, do that like just like love, the finger straight on yeah. i can't do that we all know um, uh val loves painting hands yeah that. it's my favorite so, thing painting it's hands my favorite thing. i do so love it i'm a connoisseur of painted hands <laughs> <laughs> all right uh but yeah give give jay hands an art a follow yeah, he's great follow he's great my hero dude. um super nice guy too i think you folks will uh really enjoy talking with him that's um, awesome yeah so cool. how Thanks much about how much time? Very oh cool no time. problem. My pleasure. Um, we have like 20 minutes. Uh, 15 minutes. Okay. Do I do math right? No, I'm you a creative writing major, friends. <laughs> if you didn't know that. Math is not my strong suit. You will learn that. Math is not my no. strong suit either. That's about I struggled minutes. with math all through school. Don't feel bad. It yeah, happens I, to a lot I of us. I wrote for college. I I love writing myself. Um, I think it lends itself to um storytelling um in art as well i like to yeah. uh write stories and paint the characters for it and all that kind of stuff writing is i don't know like are do you write is it like more of a journalism type thing or is it it's, like stories yeah or? good question i originally wanted to be a journalist in okay. college but i actually messed up i didn't apply in time uh because you know college you procrastinate and i just was mm -hmm. not on top of it um, so then I went into creative writing and the main goal there, my brother and I have always been super into film and video. So he was in film school and then the goal was for me to write movies. So I'll be a screenwriter and then he would direct them. That was our ultimate goal. Aww. And we somewhat, we somewhat kind of do that, right? So we're both in video production now. That's what we do professionally. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, we do make personal videos and I'm, and I actually do write the scripts for those and then he uh what? he usually films them and then we'll take turns filming them so we did kind of go in that path um but yeah it's just video production was always the end goal for both me and my twin so yeah i think it worked out that's awesome dude that's yeah. crazy i i also i also create stuff with my brother as well we um he also writes and I write, and so we write stories very together fun. very often, and I illustrate them, and he makes um, music for them. Oh, and how fun. It's taken yeah. a while to get off the ground. We've tried to announce it a few times, but it's it's like a really, it's a, it's a really heavy project that we're trying to do, but we've been we've been recording our own audiobooks um, for the stories that we write together. And um, then each story has its own like theme song. And my brother has like written music and composed music um, for it. And we have like the sound effects in there and everything. It's just a lot of, a lot of stuff to do, you know? So like to like release one and feel like it's finished. Um, but yeah, we've been, so I make cool stuff with my brother too. It's a very good time. Fun. Yeah, it's awesome. We're, we're very close. Um, we're twins, so. We're best buds, so it's fun. It's fun to collab. We are not twins, uh, but my brother uh, likes to tell everybody he's older than me. That's huh. the deal, and and it doesn't help that he? I. No, he's he's not. I'm the oldest of all of my siblings, um, but I look the youngest. So my brother is 25, 26, and he is six four. Um, and tall, I man. look like a small child next to him. Um, even at which I feel like I'm tall, you know, at five, nine, I feel like I'm not a short person, but I look much younger and much smaller than my brother. Um, and he, he introduces me as like, hey, Oh yeah, this is, is my younger thing. sister. This is my younger sister Val. And I'm like, yeah. I, mm. and you I always look looked younger for my age too. Did you really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Before, well, before I could grow this, um, and I was beer, yeah. like older, but now that as I'm getting older, I'm like, Hey, I'll take the youth. I'll take the youthful looks. 
I um, I feel like when somebody says that you're younger than them and then you argue in public that you're not younger than them, the more you argue, the younger you seem <laughs> too. So it's like, it's a trap. It can work. It's a, it's a trap. It's a total trap. <laughs> you cannot okay. handle memes of this magnitude. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, um, so... All right, where are we at with this postcard? We have about... I'm going to leave the postcard. Minutes. I told you I was bad at math. Yeah, I'm, so I'm good have... with the postcard right now. Um, okay. I'm going to put this good. into... Um, am I going to change this? I don't think I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this to like um, seven inches by seven inches just to make it a square. Um, and we're going to throw in the wayfinder. Hey, yo. Oh, so this in here. okay. A little Easter. Egg. Boom. Yeah, we're gonna throw go. not into out. the actual thing. We're gonna make the we're gonna make the promo for it now. Um, so we're gonna okay. shrink this down. Let's get some promos. Yeah. We're gonna throw this in here. Um, and then I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring the uh it's transforming. It's working on it. I'm gonna bring the um droid in as well so i'm just going to come over here with my artboard tool by the way uh artboard tool um is right behind your move tool uh and that artboard tool allows you to you can you know drag and create new um, artboards you could also create artboards like this if i come over here and select this artboard and make sure i have my artboard tool selected i could just boop click that plus button and then i could drag this down however i like right here i'm Super gonna make easy. this nine by 11 um and we're gonna throw our viper probe droid in here let me turn that on um i think i'm gonna turn this convert that to a smart object i don't th i think it's transparent it should be transparent and we can throw that in here um i think that that's a good size for that poster and we are going to test our luck here I'm going to put this Viper Pro Droid up here and I'm going to paint bucket in. Oops. No. Just to. Yeah. Transparent. Hey, Very cool. Check that out. Um, so uh, we are going to add some text to our um, Wayfinder here. Uh, and I want to make it like. Uh, let's throw this in here. We're going to. I'm going to just write Wayfinder because we want everybody to know what it is. We're going to make this like the Wayfinder is for sale. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Um, Where did it go? There it is. I like this uh, font too for this, even though it's a little odd. Also, I'm just free transforming my text. Um, I know people hate that. I do know. I noticed that. I, I <laughs> wasn't sure if it was constrained to the X and Y axis, but I'm like, hey. I'm so sorry, but I, I do that sometimes. If I'm working on a client project, sometimes I, you know, I don't, I don't do that. Um, I make sure that all of my fonts um, have, you know, set uh, sizes and, and everything. And I make sure everything's consistent and all that. But like, I feel like I'm, I'm having fun right now um, and I'm, maneuvering things around and just trying to get it in place and it doesn't really matter to me if i transform it one way or the other um honestly when i when i'm just working on a fun project um so i don't worry about it and i unfortunately do <laughs> free transform my text <laughs> um i feel like uh, andrew hawk Reddle's shaking in his boots right now he's just what yeah. are you doing <laughs> Rob what are you said, doing? squish and slam got it yeah um i don't know how i feel about the font anymore maybe we should use the do i have the star wars font it seems like it comes out of like uh goosebumps you know or some like uh it does youth, honestly uh youth horror novel or something what if we made it like that actually is a really cool idea i actually like that like because it does kind of look like goosebumps it does, yeah. Um, it like it really does look yeah, like, like it's supposed to be creepy text or something. Yeah, like a um a wayfinder. Uh yeah, but something. spooky, you know? It's a Sith Wayfinder. It's spooky. It unveils yeah. spooky secrets. We need um we need 
the wayfinder and the something something the wayfinder in the like we need a title it's a book title now it's not a sales it's not a sales <laughs> yeah. promo anymore yeah like like harry potter and the source of stone like yeah wayfinder and the um this is where this is where the chat comes in let us know chat yeah It'll give be us a cool something. title using the word wayfinder yeah uh wayfinder and the coarse sand i don't know <laughs> just think it out loud here uh, I'm usually really snappy with something like this. Like, I feel like yeah. I can usually come up with something. Um, Wayfinder and the secrets of Exegol or so that could, that could work. Like, I feel like that's like a how, 80s. How much like, canon do we need to know? Yeah. Yeah. The Let's Wayfinder see. and the Lost Jedi, Laura says. I like that. There, there we that's go. Cool. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hammer Gerd, ghost, curse berms. Curse berms. <laughs> Rob, you're a funny guy. Um. Oh, this is when it's not in caps. Oh, it's the same font. I've never used this font in caps. So it's like it's like cursive in its lower case. Huh. And uh, like caps. Not. Oh, I like that. That's, that's I like how that's cool. looking. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do like uh, I kind of I kind of like it over top, but I don't know if that will will work. Um, but we could. We probably need a different color. See how it looks. Yeah. Throw it like this, and what we can do is let's select this, uh, and we're going to put a clipping mask. Hey, my favorite thing, clipping masks, and clipping mask. my dissolve brush, the handy dandy uh, noise brush. Uh, and what we'll do is we will play with color contrast. We will grab this green, um, and we will throw that green right here oh i see what you're doing okay yeah now we're really getting goosebumps vibes and then we will select the jedi here and we will make a clipping mask above that clipping mask and we will select this color uh and we will color contrast indeed very cool give it a little spice i like that very cool though a little spicy um yeah. so i feel like you can you can read it now right yeah Wayfinder. Wayfinder and the Lost Jedi. That's so good. Thank That's you for really that suggestion, good. Laura. Oh, uh, yeah, that really brilliant. Works. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and duplicate this. And we're going to put the. Oh, what am I doing? Do you see what I just tried to do? I, I think I you just, dragged a text layer into your artboard. I just tried to drag it to where I wanted the word the. Yeah. Please don't. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Please don't tell anybody I did that. This is a secret between me and you, chat. I'm <laughs> so not sure what you're doing there, but you know Photoshop way better than me. <laughs> Maybe it works that way. I don't know, Val. Teach us something. <laughs> Teach me something. Show us. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing with this. Why, why is it adding? There we go. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to hustle. I'm trying to hustle here. Um, what, yeah, what we got about we uh, six-ish minutes. Okay. Um, I'm going to be the quickest I've ever been, I think. On the time. Yes. Um, in the meantime, though, let me know if anybody has any questions in the chat or any of that. Yeah, let us know. Everybody's just agreeing. This is pretty darn cool. It's Wayfinder good. and the Lost Jedi. Wayfinder and the Lost Jedi. This How is fun. really cool. I feel like I want to bump it up just slightly. And I might actually, because I love this so much. This was such a great idea for me, chat. Um, I love, I guess it was you said goosebumps paco and then we got a title from chat i love this so much yeah. i mm -hmm. think that i will actually add some more to it to be honest and just like really make it like a like a book because it also kind of has like a um uh indiana jones vibe right yeah you're right yeah it has like an indiana yeah, same title too like you know indiana jones and raiders of the lost ark yeah so I just really like it. So we're going to leave that one there. The Wayfinder and the Lost Jedi. We got our Tatooine. 
um, thing. And then in our last few minutes here, uh, what I'm going to do is make a new layer. And um, I don't think that we can label everything in our uh, little Viper Droid spec sheet here. But what we can do um, oops, is I can uh, kind of build it out. So let me open up my uh, libraries here because I have this texture that I used on the um, Wayfinder. Nice. Um, and I'm going to throw that back here and I'm going to see what that looks like if I decide to throw it in the back. That's kind of cool. It's a little kind of, there we go. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. So that's very subtle, but we're going to take a dark color because we're going to, we, we, we want it to be interesting in the back. Cause it's going to be like a poster that, um, has like little indicators that show details of the, um, the robot, the droid off. Um, but we want to make sure that it's not so busy that we won't be able to see the awesome information that we put here. So I'm going to go like this and just put like some subtle texture. I'll make another layer and I want an uh, even darker color. And the reason why is because I want to, I don't know if that's too much. Um, I might just need to subtract from here. I want to use contrasting colors in the background to um, kind of build this visual aid to seeing the details of the droid if that makes sense nice. yeah um yeah it's bringing them out a lot more and what i might do is instead of lightening that back there is i might come over here to the probe droid and do a clipping mask and hit b and grab this dark color and i might just darken the legs okay there we go um and then i'll grab this light color how are we doing on a time uh, we have five minutes. Okay. Um, so now we can see it because I darkened those legs in the background to um, make them really look like they're in the background. And then I brightened the little grabby hands and arms that are in the grabby foreground. Hands. The grabby hands. I love that. Um, and then the last thing I think is I kind of want to mellow it out. And I don't know if this will work, but we can grab like this dark color. Oops, not on you. Oh um blend mode it yeah i want to blend mode it i don't know if it should be that because that's pretty um what i just don't want is for it to be so saturated because i feel like mm -hmm. the droid can be saturated but if the background is also very saturated then it is going to distract from what the focal point is so maybe i'll do right. subtract and then i will just kind of fade it back in a little bit so that it's very slight i can also mess with the um the curves or you know of this maybe i'll just edit the uh oh no we could do what's that i wonder if we could oh, add a stroke. white stroke yeah like a little glowy stroke thing yeah and it's a little it's not extra clean um, because I, you know, I painted this, but right. I, um, can mask, uh, out a lot of this stuff and we can, um, just put the stroke there to really give it, um, some definition so that I don't have to tweak the background, um, too much and we can, you know, clean it up. And then what I'd like to do in these last few moments is, um, I want to do stuff like this. So, you know, we're going to talk about the eye. So we're gonna, oops, let me grab this and we'll get a white brush. Um, and is this a different layer? Yes. Yeah. So I wanna do stuff like this. Let's grab, click here and do that. You know, we'll talk about the grabby hand. You know, we'll the talk about hand. this weird little, you know, thing right here. What's this thing over here? You know, what is this? Maybe this comes out um, like so over here. Maybe we talk about this weird little guy um, and then we will have, we could have, cause we can't, you know, we don't have time for it right now, but we can have like little points of interest um, written about uh, all of this stuff. Um, 
which I will, I'll, I'll finish it. If you guys want to tweet to me, um, funny things we can put on this robot, I will put them on. Um, and then yeah. I will tweet it so that you folks can see, um, all of the strange, uh, little goings on with this droid, um, so that we can add it. But I, I just wanted to at least give you like a really good visualization of right. what I plan, um, and how this would eventually look. So we've got our Tatooine postcard. Um, and I think we are, yeah, we're coming to way the end of time here. So, um, we've got our, 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 uh, Fiber Probe Droid poster, which will be complete very soon. We have got our um, greetings from Tatooine, double the sun, double the fun, double the fun postcard, and we have got our the Wayfinder and the Lost Jedi story so cover. Good. I this really is like the how that best one. Came one. Out. Yeah, that, I really like how that one came out. That's pretty fun. And I couldn't have done it without you guys. I really couldn't have. Yeah. Um, this so... is why we do this. This is community design, and it's fun. The suggestions yes. spark new sparks. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed cool this. I had yeah. a really good time. I feel like we came, even though we didn't finish uh, the uh, probe droid diagram, I feel like we created three really solidly put together um, pieces as Star Wars tributes. And I feel like they all have their own unique flair and flavor. Um, so I'm happy with them. Yeah, um, I agree. There they are one more time. Um, I think these came out super cool and it was super fun hosting you, Val. Uh, it's been really fun. I don't always come out of the behind the scenes to host, but if it's Star Wars and it's got Val, I'm there. So it's been a well, blast. Thank you. Thank it's you always a pleasure. This. It's, um, yeah, it's been really to, fun to be hosted by you. Um, and I know we're coming to the end. So I will say farewell to all you folks. Please stick around because there's more cool stuff. You yeah, know? a lot more cool stuff. We got uh, Julia Vaca with the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. And then we'll have Brady from Texture Labs finishing up his Star Wars propaganda poster. So check those out. Don't go anywhere. All right. Adios, folks. All right, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.